hello, I'm Dan Criswell with Air Tractor. Uh, behind you is the uh, model AT802. Uh, it's configured right now for firefighting mission. It holds 800 gallons of uh, water or fire retardant uh, and has about uh, 1,600 pound or 1,600 horsepower. Um, it's uh, our largest model. Uh, this one will be going to Spain after the show. Uh, will be uh, the reason there's two cockpits on this on this particular model is because uh, that operator intends to use it for both firefighting and for training wow. is it going to be ferried over there yes this one will be ferried uh, across the north north atlantic uh, and and down to spain uh, in order to enable that it has we're temporarily using the hopper for a fuel tank uh -huh. in order to have about 1,200 gallons right, of, right, of right, fuel right. Uh, for the trip. Sure, sure. Um, this is absolutely incredible. So the, uh, um, let's see, what would, uh, okay, so what is the, uh, the fuel capacity on? This one has 308 gallons in the wings. Okay. So uh, that's our largest fuel capacity for this model. There are, uh, different options as far as how much fuel the airplane can have but this is the largest at 308 gallons sure sure absolutely incredible the um so with this plane it has unique flying characteristics yes you know so what is a typical flight envelope that it, it, it sees during the well it obviously does 60 degree banks regularly uh -huh. um as part of the maneuvering to uh, to fly for agricultural missions, not so much for those, those kinds of turns aren't used as much in firefighting, but for agricultural missions they uh, do very steep turns. Uh, the little windows up on the top there are used to see the ground during the turns <laughs> oh, to really? give you an idea of how much they have to bank, wow, wow. right? Um, and then the, what is a what is wingspan? Uh, this one has about a 60 foot wingspan. That's incredible. And then, so what are we? What do we have up there above the uh, the end numbers? We have that venting. What is that? For? That's the air conditioning system. Uh, it uh, that's the uh, uh, condenser. Okay. Uh, occurs there. It's a the compressor is engine driven, and then the evaporator is right behind the cockpit. It blows the cold air into the into the cockpit. There you go. And then this is something new that I've never seen. So we have an additional vertical stabilizer yes it's actually to provide some additional directional stability because the vertical fin is its height is limited in order to make the airplane go underneath wires more easily without the as much risk of cutting the top of the vertical fin right, off right, right. and now we don't encourage operators to go under power lines but sometimes they do accidentally and so we deliberately keep the height of the vertical fin lower and make up the area with these, sure. these other surfaces. Sure. And I, I see that this is, what, what do you call it, a, is this a, a, a center pivot point in the center there? Uh, no, actually the pivot point is, is here. Uh -huh. And this much of it is ahead of, the, it's, it's essentially a way to reduce uh, control forces. Okay. So one of the things that's important for agricultural operations especially is to have very light control forces. Mm -hmm. And that's difficult to do as the airplane gets larger and larger. Right. And so this is a, an aerodynamic technique for uh, essentially countering some of the air loads that occur behind the hinge line. Right. These air loads are in front of the hinge line and, and reduce hinge moment. Wow. What is the weight of the uh, aircraft? So it has a maximum weight of 16,000 pounds. Okay. And then an empty weight about? About half of that, oh, okay. about 8,700 pounds. Wow. So, so if you ever have a, an opportunity to fly in one of these, um, what's unique about them is that they are very often close to the ground. And uh, even though they're not known for being fast airplanes, when you're uh, when you're 10 feet off the ground, it seems very fast. And what speed are you going at that? 
We do about a, about 120 miles per hour over the surf over the ground when we're spraying. There you go. That's, that's incredible. The company that builds these is Air Tractor, located in Alney, Texas, which is in North Texas, northwest of Fort Worth. Sure, you can either start again or finish. Okay. Uh, I am an engineer. I uh, I work on mechanical systems for the company and propulsion systems for the company and. Uh, have a good time. We, we are a small department, but uh, everybody has lots of different uh, job opportunities to change from one thing to another all the time. While they're spraying, the, the way that uh, the pattern is maintained so you're not missing any spots or going over the same spot twice is with a GPS system that's custom designed for, uh, for that purpose. It, uh, it tells you where you've been and where you need to go on the next path. And there's a light bar that's set up on the top of the fuselage that basically tells you to turn left or turn right or stay right on this line for the next pass. And it keeps track of the history of what your flight has done. There you go, there you go. And then the, uh, so look at these tires. These tires are the size of car tires. They're and bigger and wider a little bit. Right, they're made for off-field landings and uh, unimproved runways, oftentimes consisting of turf or even a gravel sometimes. There you go, there you go. And then this is the release for the... So this is, a, this is configured for firefighting. Uh -huh. So those doors you see in the middle there open up like a clamshell doors and uh, allow the release of the water or the fire retardant sure. that's inside the tank. Sure, sure, that's incredible. And we're right here, we're in front of the engine. Yes. Can you tell us about the engine? This airplane is equipped with a PT6A-65AG Pratt & Whitney turboprop engine. Um, it has uh, about 1,500 horsepower, shaft horsepower. The propeller is a uh, constant speed Hartzell propeller. Um, those PT6As, so popular, so many different versions. Yes. And uh, that, that's just insane. The, uh, and then the, um, so what it, so how does a person become a firefighter or an agricultural pilot? Uh, well, it starts by becoming com a commercial pilot and having, uh, tailwheel experience and uh, you can often go to a school for that purpose. Uh, the best way is really to contact an existing operator and tell them you're interested and they will uh, they will per perhaps put you on their ground crew to, crew to begin with and then uh, once you've got some experience with the ground parts of the uh, operation they'll, and if you've got the pilot qualifications then they will uh, Put you in the cockpit, perhaps. Hello from AirVenture. I'm Lindsay Barber with the National Agricultural Aviation Association. We're the national association representing the aerial application industry, and we're excited to be here. One of the things that we're doing at AirVenture is we're recruiting for the next generation of ag pilots. A few requirements to get into the aerial application industry are that you need your commercial license, you need tailwheel time, class two medical, and you need to take a state pesticide commercial applicator license. If you're interested in joining our great industry, I recommend that you get in touch with a local operator or pilot. You can check out names at agaviation.org. Just search with your zip code under find an aerial applicator, call them up and say you're interested in becoming an ag pilot. When you call up your local operator, just tell them that you're interested in possibly becoming an ag pilot. Go out and visit them. Maybe mix and load for them for one summer and see what happens. Good luck and we look forward to seeing you at a future NAAA convention. Thank you for watching.